In this example we want to find the global extreme points and the associated values of the function for a function f of xy over a particular domain. We have our function f of xy equals x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy plus 27. The domain is where both x and y are greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 4. Recall the steps that we go through to find the global extreme points. If the domain of the function is a closed and bounded set then we can apply the extreme value theorem. That tells us that a global maximum and a global minimum exist. The first step then is to find all the interior station points in the domain. We do that by applying the first order conditions and solving for x and y. Next we evaluate the function along the boundary. Usually what we can do there is that we know a value of x or a value of y and we can substitute into our function and so along a particular section of the boundary we have a function in one variable that we can evaluate. We'll see how we do that in this example. Once we've done steps 1 and 2, we just select the largest overall value and the smallest overall value, and there are our global extreme points. Let's have a look at the domain of our function. The domain is defined in the xy plane. We have the origin, where both x and y are 0. The domain is between 0 and 4, so along the x-axis we look at 4. Along the y-axis, so have 4. The domain will be an area enclosed in a square. That's our domain there. We can see the domain is closed and bounded, so we can apply the extreme value theorem. We know that there's a global maximum and a global minimum for the function in that domain. Our first step is to find the interior stationary points. We'll do that by applying the first order conditions. So finding the first derivatives and setting them equal to zero. The first derivative of our function, f1 prime of x and y is equal to 3x squared minus 9y. Set that equal to 0, call that equation 1. The other first order partial is f2 prime and that's equal to 3y squared minus 9x. We'll set that equal to 0 and call that equation 2. Well from 2 we see that x is equal to one third y squared, sub into 1. That will give us 3 times well, 1 third y squared, all squared, minus 9y is equal to 0. Expanding and simplifying, we'll have 1 third y to the fourth minus y is equal to 0. We can factorise that. We'll have 1 third y times y cubed minus We've got that one third out there, so it'll be minus 27 is equal to zero. Call that three. We can see from equation three, the y is equal to zero, or y cubed is equal to 27. In other words, y equals three. We know x equals one third y squared. So this implies when y equals naught, x equals naught. When y equals three, x is equal to three. So we have two stationary points to evaluate at 0, 0 and 3, 3. Our next step is to evaluate the function along the boundary. We'll do that in segments. So we have a square with four sides, of course. We'll look at each side. We'll look at the function when y equals 0. When that's the case, x will take values from 0 to 4. Let's have a look at what we're doing there. Here's our domain. We're letting y equal 0 and x change from 0 to 4. So we're evaluating the function along this side. Given that y equals 0, we can place all the y's in our function with zeros. So we'll have our function, it'll be f of x plus 0 for y, will equal x cubed plus 27. We can see that's an increasing function. It has a minimum value when x equals 0. The function will have a value we substitute in for 0, 0, of 27. The function will have a maximum value along that edge when x takes its maximum value, so when x equals 4. The function will have its maximum value along that side when x equals 4 and y equals 0, and that's equal to 91. Here we have two more points to add to our evaluation. 0, 0 and 4, 0.
Next we'll evaluate another side when y equals 4 and x will take values from 0 to 4 again. To y equals 4, that's here. So we're evaluating our function along this edge. Once again we replace the y's with 4, so f of x4 will equal x cubed minus 36x plus 91. This is a more complicated function. It's a function in one variable. Let's call it g of x. We'll evaluate it when x equals 0 and x equals 4, but we also want to determine whether there are any stationary points along that side. So we apply our first order conditions to this function, g prime x is equal to 3x squared minus 36 is equal to 0. That implies that x squared minus 12 is equal to 0, or x is equal to the square root of 12. So along this edge we have possible extreme points at either end. So y is equal to 4, so we'll have 0, 4, and 4, 4, the other end. And where x equals the square root of 12. Of course we're along this edge, so y is always equal to 4. Put that in there. We have three more potential extreme points to evaluate. Next, let's look at the case where x equals naught. So that's along this edge of our square. x is always equal to naught, and y varies from 0 to 4. The function f of naught y is equal to y cubed plus 27. Again, we have an increasing function. So the minimum value will be when y equals naught. And the function equals 27 there. The maximum value along that side will be when y equals 4, and the function will equal 91. The last side to look at is when x equals 4. So now we're evaluating the function along this side. When x equals 4, our function is this. y cubed minus 36y plus 91. Just as we did in part b, we'll let this be a function of one variable. We'll look for stationary points along this side of the function. We'll use the first order conditions. And as we saw before, this implies that y equals the square root of 12. So along this side, we have three points to evaluate. When y equals 0, when y equals 4, and the stationary point. So we have our three possible stationary points then will be, well, x equals 4, so it'll be 4, 0, 4, 4, and when x equals 4 and y equals the square root of 12. If you've been keeping count, you'll see that we've had seven points that are possible extreme points. The easiest way to evaluate them is to form a table. Here we have our seven candidates for extreme points. Let's evaluate the function at these points. At 0, 0, the function is equal to 27. At 0, 4, 91. 3, 3, it's equal to 0. When x equals the square root of 12 and y equals 4, our function is approximately equal to 7.86. When x equals 4 and y is 0, the function is 91. At x equals 4 and y equals the square root of 12, the function is again approximately equal to 7.86. And at 4, 4, the function is equal to 11. So we're looking for a global minimum and a global maximum over the domain. Here we'll have a global min. And we have two points that are equal global maximums. Once again, we should always write out our conclusions at the end of an exercise. We have a global minimum at point 33, where the function is equal to 0. And we have two points that are global maxima at 0, 4 and 4, 0 the function is equal to 91. And that completes the exercise and lecture 7.